In this video, I will present in simple and efficient methodology used to 3D model a planing hull. Our intention is not to discuss the parameter of the shape of the hull, but to focus on the modeling methodology used to create its surfaces. To do so, we will bring an initial hull as reference. A hull which was quickly generated in the plugin Orca 3D. A typical planing hull will have three main surfaces, the bottom, with a V shape also known as dead rise angle and responsible for cutting the waves, making the cruising more comfortable, the hard shine, preventing the water spray from climbing the side of the hull upwards, and the hull top sides, as you can see in our example. Let's start extracting the main curves from our preliminary hull shape. To do so, I will use the duplicate edge command and select all the edge curves of the hull and finally confirm. I'm going to create a new layer, which I'm going to rename auxiliary, which I'll add all these auxiliary curves. I'm going to move the objects by clicking in Change Object Layer, and then I will hide them. Orca generates the planning hulls with a single surface, so the chine curves are not surfaces edges. Our method will use three surfaces, so we still need to extract the chine curves to use them as references. To get the chine curves, I'm going to use the Extract Isocurve command. By clicking on the vertices, you can select the inner and outer curves of the chine. Then, I can confirm the command. I will hide the orca hull and bring all the auxiliary curves. Now we have all the curves we need to create the hull surfaces. As we mentioned before, you can also create those curves manually or using 2D images as reference. So, for example, if you look at the top view, assuming that this is a reference image imported into Rhino, I would, looking at the image, create a curve trying to follow the shape in the picture. In this video though, we will not follow this method. So let's continue with our curves from the Orca hull. Now we need to optimize our curves, minimizing their number of control points, keeping them as simple as possible, but still respecting the shape we want to respect. This way, when we generate the surfaces, they will also be simple and clean. Also, we want the surfaces to be generated by four curves to keep a good surface structure. Starting with the bottom, it is usually formed by four edges, one that goes from the keel to the hull's forefoot, another that goes from the forefoot to the chine. Notice that this curve here is going all the way to the top, so I'm going to split it. For that, I'm going to use the split command to select the curve and split right here in the chine. And now, as you can see, the keel curve is divided into three parts. At the transom, we have this curve, which needs to be split in three. I will use the explode command so that the bottom, the chine and top side part are divided. So now we have all the curves necessary to create the four edges of the whole bottom. The keel curve divided in two segments, the inner edge of the chine and the intersection of the bottom to the transom. We also want to avoid a triangular surface in the chine, so we usually give it a width at the bow. Notice that the orca generated it without any thickness, leading its single point. So I'll select this control point and with the rhino's gumball, I'm going to move it 10 millimeters forward. And then I'm going to create a line connecting the inner curve of the chine with the outer one. So now the chine has got a small width at the bow. I'm just going to need to adjust the bow curve so it matches with the new position of the outer curve of the chine. To model the top side surface, we will need to have the curve that is called shear line, which is this curve, this curve from the stern and the keel curve at the bow. So we have the four necessary curves to create the whole top side too. With all of these curves separated, we can move on to optimizing them. The logic here is to use the same number of control points and curve degree for each pair of curves. The longitudinal curves and the transversal curves should match. By doing this, we can control the structure of the surfaces that will be generated from those curves. At this stage, we use the rebuild command, which is this command. I'm going to select the keel curve that I want to rebuild. It has seven control points in the longitudinal and degree three. Let's try to put six control points on the longitudinal and degree three. Notice that the maximum variation is 22 millimeters, which we understand to be acceptable considering the size of the hull. So I'm going to confirm it by pressing OK. I'm going to do the same thing with the inner chine, which is also in the longitudinal. So I'm going to accept a variation of 16 millimeters and do the same thing for the outside chine curve. Accept a variation of 27 millimeters and also for the shear line curve with a variation of 28 millimeters. For the other curves, we will try to keep the same logic. 
The bottom usually has only three control points. It's enough because it will have a small curvature here. So I'll use again the rebuild command. As you can see, it has four, but I'll simplify it to three control points. If you prefer, you can keep those four to allow more control of the bottom curvature. For the chine, I'm going to make it straight. So I'm going to leave it with two control points and degree of curvature one. And in the top side, the same thing. I'm going to put three control points. So degree of curvature two and three control points. In the bow region, I'm going to try to keep the same logic. I'm going to set three control points and degree two, keeping the same logic that we did at the stern. In this menu, I'm going to select the option to preserve the tangency. I'm going to press OK, and this way I make sure that it maintains the tangency between these two curves here. To check it, I can use this command called geometric continuity of two curves that will tell you if the two curves are tangent. In this case, it says that the continuity is in G0, but we need to guarantee the tangency. For this, I'm going to use the match command, which is this command here. Click on the two curves and in the menu options, make sure it is tangent. I will also select the average option for it to make slightly modifications on the two curves generating tangency. Now, if I analyze the curve one and two, we have them with degree one, they are tangent to each other. To guarantee the tangency, Rhino ended up creating one more control point here, so it's forcing it to have four control points. For this reason, in the back part, I'm going to keep the same four control points so that we follow the logic of the methodology, which is to try to keep the same number of control points and curvature degrees on the longitudinal and transverse curves. So I'm going to rebuild it and change it to four control points. Quick stop in this video to remind that if you wish to carry on learning about yacht design, have a look in our courses. You can learn more about them in the link in the description of this video. At the bow, we had set the back part with three control points and degree two. So I'm going to try to keep that in the front part using rebuild again. Now I can create the surfaces. To generate them, I'm going to use the sweep two command because we have curves in the longitudinal and curves in the transversal direction. Sweep two is perfect in those cases. Now you'll understand why I divided the forefoot and the keel curve of the boat. The reason is because using sweep two, I'm going to use this part and this other chine line as rails. And as cross sections, I'm going to use these two. If I hadn't splitted it, we would have a triangular surface, which we want to avoid. So now I've given all the information, I'm going to hit enter and our bottom surface is generated. I'm going to hit OK to repeat the command for the chine surface. So, Again with sweep two, we select the rails, selecting either the curve or the surface edge and the outer curve of the chine. This one here is a transversal section and this one here too. Confirm the command and it's generated the chine surface. For the top side, I'm going to use the sweep two command again. I'm going to hide all the curves. I'm going to select the other two curves that were missing. I'll change it to this layer and join all this. I'll bring the surface of the orca to compare. I'm going to select it and move it to the side, just so you can see that it's very similar to our orca hull. The logic is exactly that. Now we are only missing the transom surface. For that, I'm going to mirror these surfaces to have both sides of the hull. I'm going to hide the orca surface and create a new line connecting these two sides. And here all of these curves are in the same plane. We can use the command surface from planar curves, select all of these curves, hit enter, and then it generated our transom. I can now join it all together and our hull is modeled. The next step is to add some fillets at the center line. A hull built of fiberglass will never have totally sharp edges, which would make it very fragile. We're going to use the fillets edge command. For this, I need the entire hull to be joined. Then, here in Boolean Operations Command Group, we have the Fillet Edge command. I'm going to select the edge that I want to create the fillet. I'm going to start with this one at the bottom and we can already see a preview. It looks too small, so I will change it to something around 50 millimeters. To better check this, I'm going to come here on the display options and select the tangent edges so we can see all the edges. This is the fillet. It is common that, in the region of the forefoot of the vessel, it is usually sharper so that it can pierce the waves, and at the stern we usually use a bigger fillet so the area is less fragile. So, we need to change the size of the fillet along the keel. For this, 
we can add handles in different places with this option here. I'm going to select the region I'm interested in, in this case, this one, and I'm going to confirm with the left mouse button. Now I can change this fillet radius. For example, here, in this part, I'm going to leave the 50 millimeters. In this other part here, I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to put something around 15 millimeters. Look how it gets much sharper. I can move this handle further, leaving him around here. So here it got really sharp, and here in the stern part, I'm going to increase this fillet to something around 200. Maybe it's still small. I'll make it 600 to make it very big. So it starts with a very wide fillet back here. Narrows until here, at the forefoot, and then it increases again here in the connection with the chine. You can change it the way you want, or even add other handles to have more control along the entire bottom. I'll confirm the fillet command. Notice that this way we created the bottom fillets, and I'm going to do the same thing for this upper part. So I'm going to use the fillet command. In this top part, I'm going to leave 100 millimeters, maybe even more, around 150 millimeters. And down here, I'm going to put 80. I think that is enough, and I will confirm the command. Notice though, that here in the chine region, we will still need to make some corrections. First, I'm going to use the explode command, separating all of these surfaces. And then I'm going to hide this, and I'm going to create a line connecting this part with this part. And that part with that part, and I'm going to use those two lines as the trimming object to trim that excess of the chine. Now coming back with those surfaces that were hidden before. I will now look at the front view and notice that we have the chine, the fillet that we created for the bottom and the fillet for the top sides. I'm going to create some lines that we're going to use to trim the excess from those two surfaces. I'll use the command adjustable curve bland, connecting both sides. And I'm going to adjust it a little higher like this. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom part of the chine and I'm going to confirm. With this line, I'm going to trim this part here. And this other line, I'm going to use to trim this surface. So I'm going to use the trim command. For the cutting object, I'm going to start with this bottom part and I'm going to trim this little tip. And this line here, I'm going to use to trim this part. So if we go back here in perspective, first I'm going to select all curves, move to the auxiliary layer and notice that now we only have this little space we need to close. I'm going to use the sweep to command using this path here and this cross section here, and I can confirm. We will join all the surfaces and check if everything is united. We have our hole ready. The last procedure that is super important is to validate that all surfaces are really connected. For this, we will use an analysis tool called Show Edges. I'm going to select the hull and notice that everything that appears in pink indicates that it doesn't have a connected surface. And here, as you can see, it's nice that this problem happened, so that I can show you how to solve it. Look that as it is highlighted in pink, it indicates that both surfaces are not connected. So I'll need to fix that region, or I can just try to recreate that surface. Let's try to do it again using the sweep to command. Remember we used this path? Now I'm going to invert. I'm going to use this one as path, and this one as cross section. I'll confirm the command, let's put everything together, and analyze it one more time to see if it fixed the problem. Notice that it hasn't fixed it yet. So a second solution that we can try is, first of all, separate these chine parts. Then I'm going to hide everything else with the isolate command just to get only the chine visible. And we know that the problem is in this connection here. I'm going to use the match surface command, which is going to try to join these two surfaces. I'm going to join this one with this one. I'm going to confirm with these options here. I'll do the same thing here. Let's try to join, and we analyze one more time to see if we corrected the problem that was happening. Notice that now at this region that wasn't connecting, now it's fixed. So let's bring back all the objects. Let's put everything together and just validate that everything here is connected. I'm going to add the object and notice that we have fixed this region now. In this case, the match surface solved it and only the top part turned pink. If you want to turn this hull into a solid, we could close it with a top surface. Other details that could be added to our hull in further stages of its development would be spray rails, bow truster tunnels, shaft tunnels, etc. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wish to carry on learning about yacht design, have a look in our courses. You can learn more about them in the link in the description of this video. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments section.